Okay, uh, here's here's the big one. Here's the best of Redditor update one. So this this one has a couple of updates to awesome. it. Title of this one is best of Redditor updates. Will I be the astronaut if I skipped my sister's wedding? Throwaway account plus fake names originally posted May 31st, 2023. I-23 male am one of seven kids. There's Lydia, 31 female, Josh, 28 male, Leo, 25 male, me, then Aaron, 21 female, Nadia, 18 female, and the surprise child, Lexi, four female. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. With, uh, with that many siblings, it's easy to get lost in the crowd. Some of us have our positions, so to speak. Lydia is the oldest. Lexi's the baby. I have a kid. Yes, that's my descriptor. OP gave us a grandchild. <laughs> Aaron is the Aaron is the golden child. She was the last planned child. The one that surprised the one supposed to tie up our family. She was born premature. So I understand that my parents coddled her to an extent, but it's more than that now. Aaron's getting married and recently told us she brought the date forward due to a cancellation. No big deal. It just means they're getting married sooner. But the new date lands on the date of Nadia's high school graduation. Aaron was sympathetic, but said she's already committed to the date. They've printed the invitations. My parents normally go overboard on our high school graduations, but they said that they'd just have to miss Nadia's. We were all sympathetic, but it wasn't intentional. Or so I thought. But Nadia later told Leo and I that she was there when Aaron got the call about the cancellation and told Aaron that she was graduating that day. But Aaron just laughed and accepted the date anyway. This, as much as I hate to admit it, sounds like a very Aaron thing to do. She booked her engagement party for the night of Nadia's 18th birthday. Luckily, she wasn't celebrating until the weekend. She announced her engagement at my oldest sister's wedding anniversary. Everything is about her. I confronted Aaron about this, and she said that Nadia's high school graduation didn't matter. She wanted to get married to the love of her life sooner. It is only one month sooner, to be exact. And our family had been to plenty of high school graduations at this point. Anyway, she said something like, we still have Lexi. But here's what gets me the most. Nadia has been looking forward to this for so long. She's watched all of us graduate and had these huge celebrations thrown by our parents. I asked Nadia what she wanted, and she said that she wanted to have her day. So I told my family that me and Nadia won't be attending the wedding. Leo has also dropped out. Everyone's angry. Aaron's furious. And I didn't make it better by telling her that I could watch our other siblings get married since it's all <laughs> the same in her eyes. Mom's trying to convince me to come to the wedding because graduation isn't as important but I, I feel like if i don't do this then it sets a precedent in nadia's life she's always going to mean less than aaron i've had messages calling me an asshole an idiot etc they're telling me to step up and be a good brother but that's what i'm doing my son is supposed to be the ring bearer but but with how my family is reacting i'm considering pulling him out of the wedding too my dad's told nadia he'll take her to dinner after the wedding nadia is currently staying with me because mom won't stop cornering her am i the astronaut? Here's a, an additional comment here from original OP <sighs> comment one. That's something I should have mentioned in the post, but the difference in the original date and the new date is a month. She was supposed to get married in July, but moved it up one month to the same date as Nadia's graduation. I'm not sure on the details. I think she wanted to get married in June, but none of the venues she liked had any slots until july i'm honestly not sure and honestly i don't care to know because right now it doesn't change the fact that she's chosen to get married on nadia's graduation date comment two i mentioned two examples of aaron making everything about herself but here are some honorable mentions oh lovely mm -hmm. i proposed to my partner two months after aaron got engaged this proposal was something i'd been planning for months something my family had been made aware of for months and fell on a day that's significant to me and my partner Aaron was angry because I should have waited until this year so she'd been married beforehand. Our brother Josh was cheated on a few years back. It really broke his heart and his confidence was in tatters for a while afterwards. Aaron asked him if he could give her a necklace he'd bought for his girlfriend because it's not like he needed it. A few days after the incident took place, when he yelled at her, she cried to our parents about he was how she was trying to help him. She broke her leg the morning of Josh's college graduation. It was an accident, but all of us agreed that it was pretty on brand for her. Original OP on their parents regarding the family dynamics. I, I was interested in hearing this, mm -hmm. so I don't want to defend my parents because they are wholeheartedly in the wrong here. But I think they were under the impression that Aaron spoke to Nadia separately when she announced the date change back in March. Like they thought maybe they worked something out themselves because they thought it was an unfortunate mistake. 
Nadia only told me and Leo about the fact that it was intentional last week. They've otherwise been pretty good at attending and throwing events meant for each of us specifically, but unfortunately, on more than one occasion, the spotlight was always turned to Aaron for some reason or another. Like, as I mentioned in the post, we were celebrating Lydia's wedding anniversary and Aaron thought it'd be a good idea to announce that she was engaged without consulting Lydia at all. And our parents allowed her to do that and encouraged her by being excited for her. My parents don't seem to have picked up on this pattern in Aaron. And as I'm typing this, I'm thinking that maybe I should write a list of as many of these instances as I can remember and confront my parents with it. Another comment, unfortunately... We know which of us were planned and which of us were not. Lydia was not planned. Josh and Leo were, but I wasn't. Then our parents decided to try for another girl and they got their miracle. Nadia's their surprise gift and Lexi's their blessing. It's not so much that any of us were unwanted, just unplanned. I think our parents had Aaron assuming she'd be the baby and then she was born premature and they never once thought about changing their stance that she's their miracle child. They love Nadia and they love Lexi. And my mom apologized about having to miss out on Nadia's graduation when Aaron first told us about it. I think she mentioned that we would celebrate, that we could celebrate as a family after Aaron came back from her honeymoon. But things changed when Leo and I sat Aaron and her parents down to tell them that Nadia wanted to attend her graduation and we were going to be there for her too. Too many big days have been monopolized by Aaron, so I want Nadia to have a day that is hers, even if it's only celebrated by her two brothers, her brother's partner, and her nephew. Okay, so we we still have two updates to go here, but let's, let's talk about this for a minute. Mm-hmm. Hey, what do you what do you think? Um God. Okay. One, all of the children know who was planned and who wasn't. Yeah. That's so yeah. God dang. You know, I, I, I think we read a story on the live yesterday. I know. About, that's what it made me think of. Yeah. And I think there are some scenarios where they're adults now. So it, I think Fair. when they found out who was planning, who who wasn't, has some weight in this. If, mm-hmm. they, if they were told as kids and depending on how they were told in the story True. that we read, mom used it as a weapon. So right. that's not okay. Um, it's a, And it doesn't sound like it's that's a topic of contention for no, OP here. No, it just struck me. This. Yeah. God, I mean, with the information we have, Aaron seems kind of like an asshole. And by kind of, I mean, she's a spoiled ass brat. Yeah. And they allow her to be that. (laughs) Because they're either oblivious to it or it's just who she is and they have accepted that that's who she is. Right. But they're enabling. But they're enabling. Yeah. Um, And if they have allowed... All the other kids, or if, if they have had these big events and big parties for all the other kids, mm. th- why would this be any different? Right. Not doing it for one. If, again, singling out, choosing one over another, that sucks. Aaron moving her wedding up a month, for God's sake, it's a month. And I don't know. I guess I, I remember being excited and in the whole you know, pre getting married thing. And it is a really exciting time, but God dang it. What the hell's a month? Yeah. And then to intentionally put that on your sister's graduation. You're a dick. You're a dick. To laugh about it. Yeah. And if in fact, all of these things have happened where she's monopolized every big event, Mm -hmm. come on, somebody needs to stand up and, and this guy's right to do it. Someday, someday Aaron is going to give us, so many good mother-in-law stories. Totally. So many. She's oh, going to make the baby yeah. shower about her. She's going to yep. make she's going to make her son's wedding about her. She's mm-hmm. going to give us so many good stories. The cake stories. she wanted is going to yes. be yep. is going to be changed in the order. She's already there. Like she doesn't have to wait to become right? a mother-in-law to to be that person. She is already that person. And parents just enabling it sucks. And yeah, like just wake up to what's happening here. Yeah. If what kind parents, of parents are are funding this wedding. I think they have a responsibility to be like, no, you change that date back. Yeah, for sure. I don't think they care to do that. Probably at this point, how many kids in are we and how many graduations have we had? And yeah. If, and if, I mean, if you are prioritizing events, I would agree that a wedding is more important maybe than a graduation. I, Not if it's your kids. But if it's your own kids, you yep. don't get to do that. Right. Like in a in a stranger, if I'm looking at strangers, I'm going to say, yeah, I mean, a wedding's more important than a graduation. 
But if you're it's your children and you're choosing, the, no, you yeah. don't get to do that. Both are huge events. Both are life changing things. One didn't have the opportunity to set the date, and one did. Right. And, and one, one knew what they were doing. Exactly. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't like that. I think as a parent here, you have to look at at the future course or you know what are the repercussions for this yeah. and if they allow this to happen they are going to completely sever their relationship with at least three nadia 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 sorry there's so many kids i'm having trouble keeping so, track of names nadia nadia is the one that's graduating is the one graduating leo's the older brother and then didn't catch this one's name but this uh, one right op op yeah. so the one who gave them a grandchild that's it yeah yeah um, that's three of your kids who are willing to take a stance against this and I, you, you need to listen. Yeah. Like that's a big deal. I hate, I hate to be this guy, but if I were in Nadia's shoes right now and, you know, depending on how much I really wanted them there, uh, I, I think there is a play to be made here where it's a, okay, you can forego the big brouhaha mm -hmm. for my graduation for a price. Totally. And if, I mean, what does Aaron want out of this? Not Aaron. What does Nadia want out of this? And I think once she decides that what that is, if she's willing to, to take some other kind of, of compensation for it. And I, it's not going to, that's not going to solve the emotional yeah. damage that's going to happen for it. Yeah. I mean, that would be a band aid, and at least, you know, she would lose the ability to use it later on in life, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to solve anything. No, maybe we'll find out more in updates here. But yeah. My yeah. gosh. Yeah, that's oh, no. rough. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Update one, June 11th, 2023. So we skipped ahead. Mm -hmm. It's two days after D-Day, and I finally come bearing an update. I've had to condense it quite a bit because a lot has happened. Before I get started on the update, Nadia wanted me to thank everyone who congratulated her on her graduation. She was overwhelmed by the support you all gave her, especially after she faced such opposition from our family. So let's start. Last Friday, Leo and I went to speak to our parents and Aaron. I wanted to tell them that I'd be pulling my son from the wedding. Our older siblings ended up turning up as well. So it was four of us standing up for Nadia. Ooh. Oh, Leo had spoken to them the night before and helped them see things more clearly from Nadia's eyes. Apparently, it didn't sink in with them that Aaron chose the date intentionally. Yes, it did. They just decided mm -hmm. to ignore it. Yeah, there was too much fighting against them at this point to not see it. There was a lot of yelling. Aaron accused me of trying to sabotage her wedding. Our parents tried to convince me to let them take my son to the wedding, but I stood my ground. I felt a lot stronger with my older siblings with me. There's only two years between me and Aaron. After all, I'm not much of an older brother. Luckily, Lydia was there. Her words carry more weight as the eldest, and she didn't give Aaron or my parents room to argue as she told him that Aaron chose the date intentionally, admitted as much in front of me and Leo, and that this was normal behavior for her. Lydia told them that if they continued to favor Aaron so blatantly, the rest of us would go no contact, and Lexi would likely follow in the future. Our dad started yelling, not at us, but at Aaron, surprisingly. I've never seen him so angry before, and to see it directed at Aaron was shocking. Our mom asked us to leave. We didn't hear from anyone on that side until Monday when Aaron's fiance, George, asked to meet us at our parents. He apologized to Nadia. He didn't know that the wedding and graduation overlapped, nor did he know that it was something Aaron did on purpose. Our dad was the one to tell him, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're going to marry this woman, bro. <laughs> Signing up for life. What followed was a long talk between us, during which we all aired our grievances. I told our parents that we all felt that they valued Aaron more, that none of us mattered to them compared to her. Her artwork always went up on the fridge. Ours always went in the drawer. I told them that as a parent, I could never imagine treating my child like that. Aaron tried to argue. She tried to tell us that we were trying to turn her into a bad guy, trying to turn our parents against her, trying to sabotage her wedding. Our mom told her to be quiet, that it was our time to talk. George stepped in to tell us that he didn't expect us to attend the wedding, but we were welcome to attend the reception. He went so far as to say that he wished he could have canceled the wedding altogether, but it had only cost him more money that he'd spent by bringing it forward. Mom's willingness to hear us out lasted less than 24 hours. By Tuesday, she was begging us to reconsider. Apparently, our feelings meant nothing in the face of Aaron's dire stress and the fact that people would be questioning our absence on the big day. There it is. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. They're worried about looking bad. Yeah. 
I haven't spoken to my mom since, but I did ask my dad to bring me some of Nadia's things because she is going to be staying with me full time. We have officially gone no contact with our mother. Dad took Nadia out for an early graduation celebration on Wednesday. They had a daddy-daughter date I think that she really needed. He apologized for a lot of things and told her that he wanted to do the same with the rest of us. But Wednesday was about her. I'm happy she got that one-on-one -on -one time with him. She was happy coming home to me. And our sibling group chat, she said that she really thinks dad is going to try to mend bridges with us, even if mom won't. That will be complicated, mm -hmm. dad. Sure will. Dad also turned up early yesterday morning, I'm talking 6.30 a.m., to give Nadia flowers. He told her that he was proud of her. George even called while he was getting ready for his big day to congratulate Nadia, which I really appreciated. We did not hear from our mom or Aaron. Our paternal grandma ended up coming to the graduation with us. Ooh. It was a great day, like a really great day. We didn't think about the wedding, don't, didn't think about Aaron. We just had fun together. My son got to wear his aunt's cap and gown and nearly drowned in the fabric. Our grandma tried on the cap, too. We took photos and sent them to our dad, who posted them in a Facebook post he wrote to congratulate both Aaron on her wedding and Nadia on her graduation, and we laughed about how it must have pissed off our newly wedded sister. We went out for dinner, and we, as siblings, gifted Nadia money for a week away with her best friend, which somebody suggested in a comment on the initial post. I texted George my congratulations. Despite everything, I do hope he and Aaron are happy together. He sounds like a nice guy. He does. While she might not love us, I don't doubt that Aaron loves him. Yes, she wants her spotlight in the moment, but I don't think she's marrying him just for that. Bringing the wedding forward? Sure, that's a hugely malicious tactic to bring herself more attention. Marrying him for the sake of having a wedding? She isn't that type of narcissist. Well, she's pushing it. it depends, depends, on, <laughs> depends on, on if George has a trust fund or not, bro. Fair enough. As of right now, I plan on staying no contact with my mom unless she makes some big changes. This is a sentiment shared not only by the majority of my siblings, but it is also encouraged by our dad and grandma. She's tried reaching out to me and my partner, mostly berating us for not attending the wedding and accusing us of planning to keep her grandchild away from her. Oh, well, you're toxic. Jesus. At the moment, our summer looks busy. We're planning on filling it with as many family outings as possible before Nadia leaves for college. We've also got Josh's 29th birthday to plan. Our dad's even joining in. This might cause a bigger rift between him and mom, but for now, at least, it looks like we are his priority. Lydia's threat really did something to him. Thanks to everyone who left comments on the original post, I know they really cheered Nadia up when she was worrying about whether or not she was doing the right thing by choosing herself. Part of me wishes we could have taken this stand earlier, but it took us a while to find our voices. Looking into the future, I do see two empty spaces at my own wedding, but I also see five siblings cheering me on. I'm happy with that. We still have another update, but uh, what, what, what do you think about this one? Okay, George... Yeah. Is a good dude. Yeah. That's a good guy. George, you deserve better than Aaron. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't, I'm, I'm shocked that yeah. he ended up being okay. We're still, still agreeing to marry this woman after he got a preview of how malicious, malicious. Well, but she's he also said something about money and how much was yeah, already Yeah, it would spent. cost him money. Yeah, but. The, but this is a mindset that people have, right? Oh my God. I like, know. Well, I've already paid for the wedding. I'm still going to go through and marry her. Not thinking that I, if this woman is this malicious, how much money is it going to cost you yeah. down the road in a divorce? I guarantee you this happens often where people get to a point of the wedding. They're like, well, shit, I've already spent all this money. I guarantee that happens. It's and it. God bless you, George. <sighs> You're in for the f Uncle yeah, guy. it's going to be fun, buddy. Ooh. Wait till you have kids because she has this yeah. problem with her siblings. She's going to have this problem with your kids. I wondered about that, too. What kind of a parent does an Aaron turn into? Yeah. If they can't stand attention. Well, they turn into a parent who plans birthday parties and yeah. and makes them about themselves. Well, And, and like we said, well, the yeah. mother-in-law, yeah. she's going to be that mother-in-law. For sure. But she started so much earlier in life. Like what? She'd be well pro-seasoned. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, she's. That's rough. That's rough. Okay, so so George is cool. Dad is seemingly cool. I don't know how that's gonna work. I don't either. No, and they've got a four Home year old must still. Be hell. God damn. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Right? You got a little mini person in the middle of whatever hell is happening in that marriage, because I promise you there's so much hell happening in that marriage right now. Um, but dad did a really like he put out a lot of effort to try to make both feel important. Um, and I almost get the vibe that maybe he went to Aaron's. I think that he would have gone to Nadia's graduation. Yeah. 
But I mean, that marriage would have been over if he'd have done that. I'm sure. Sure, I, I'm surprised that it's not already. And and you typically well, don't yeah. see one member of a married couple take action or take a stance that that is that is differing than the other's opinion. Yeah. And and especially that big. Especially that big and especially when it's when it's the husband because the husband yeah. typically will just go along to get along because he doesn't want to rock the boat because he doesn't want to deal with the bullshit that his life is going to become if he if he's a dissenter from yeah. from his Khaleesi, right? So True. But I'm shocked. here we have a situation where finally a parent has prioritized their kid. Yeah. One of them. I mean, both. He really did a good job of of trying to prioritize prioritize both of them. But he didn't choose his spouse over his kids in this case, which I'm here for that. I mean, I think spouses should be a united front, but that wasn't going to happen with right. mom. She wasn't budging, nor was she willing to listen. And he did what he had to do to make both kids feel special. And that's do you huge. you think his actions would have been different or even more severe if they didn't have a four-year-old. Oh, I think so. That's a good point. I mean, cause he, he probably a large part of him is like, yes, I'm going to do this, but I also, I have to, I have, he's, he's, he's spending like three plates right now. Well, yeah. way more than that, but he's, he's keeping all of his plates spinning right now because it doesn't want to lose anybody. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Um, I also think, I don't know if this is everybody, obviously I'm not a dad, but, for me, my dad walking to me down the aisle and doing all the daddy daughter stuff on a wedding day is that was huge for me. Like cried about it every time I thought about it because I'm, I'm such a daddy's girl and I don't know about Aaron. She sounds like she's probably more of a mommy's girl, but I'm sure they seem to have a nice relationship prior mm -hmm. to this. So I'm sure he didn't want to miss out on those opportunities sure. either. Cause my, my dad had those, those feelings too of like he, it was just as important to him as it was to me that we have that moment together before we walk down the aisle that, that he walked me down the aisle and said whatever goofy damn thing he said to Scott <laughs> and um, that we had our dance together and all these special things. And it was stuff that we both had, had thought about forever. And so probably Aaron and he had some of those things too. Right. And he probably was trying to take some of that into account too. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and that's much more interactive for him than a graduation. Yeah. And I thought he, he would have preferred to be at both obviously. Yeah. And, and nothing, nothing can take away, you know, Aaron doing this maliciously mm -hmm. and intentionally. Yeah. And that's, that's terrible. It is. We still have another update here. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Update October 31st, 2023. It's been about five months since I've last posted and I've had some requests for an update. So I figured I'd sit down and write one up. Bear in mind, a lot can happen in five months and that's definitely true for this. Let me start off with July. Aaron and George went on their honeymoon and their absence sent our mom into a frenzy. She wasn't used to having no one around. Someone was always visiting, mostly Aaron, but the rest of us would visit out of obligation and see Nadia and Lexi. With Aaron on her honeymoon and the rest of us, no contact, mom had no visitors and she really didn't like that. Literally the day after Aaron left, we started getting bombarded with phone calls. She tried convincing Nadia first, which Lydia thought was a strategic move because Nadia is the more timid of all of us and thus more likely to be persuaded. Oh, I guarantee you that was mm -hmm. the case. Which one can I turn the easiest? Yep. When Nadia turned her down, she turned her sights on the rest of us. We all got identical phone calls with her trying to persuade us to go visit her, to understand her, to see things from Aaron's perspective. She even brought up the circumstances of Aaron's premature birth <laughs> and how it was a miracle that she was even here. Josh told her to do better with Lexi. Lydia blocked her number. When the phone calls didn't work, she started turning up at our homes. She continued spewing much of the same shit she had over the phone before the wedding. She didn't understand what she'd done so wrong, why we were treating her like this. She called me ungrateful and disrespectful. She accused us of harboring unnecessary jealousy towards Aaron and that she loved us all equally. Yes, mother, that's why you're showing up saying Clearly. all this shit and defending her and... And, <laughs> and victim mentality. Yes, taking zero accountability. 
I didn't respond to these comments. I was just trying to prevent her from going inside and saying the same things to Nadia, who was with my partner and son in the living room. Her comments didn't deserve a response. And when she was done, I asked her to leave as calmly as I could. But truthfully, I felt a little like crying. But who wouldn't feel shitty when their mom, with their mom yelling in their face like that, trying to downplay years of pain and calling it unnecessary jealousy? My siblings and I have been let down time and time again by her and our dad ever since Aaron was born. They missed out on so many things over the years, both big and small. But we had one thing, one thing, one thing that they never missed. And we were happy with just that one thing. And that was our high school graduations. But they couldn't give that to Nadia. All we had were our high school graduations. They missed Josh's college graduation because Aaron broke her leg. It was an accident. I get that. But they never made it up to him. They never celebrated this huge achievement afterwards, and he just had to grin and bear it. Our mom didn't turn up to my partner's baby shower after making such a huge fuss about it because Aaron didn't want to go and wanted them to get their nails done together instead. But our jealousy is unnecessary? Sorry. I don't know how I managed to stay calm while she was yelling at me, but I did. Asking her to leave made her switch tactics, though, and she started calling out for my son, trying to coax him to go to her and telling me that she had the right to see her grandson. My partner stepped in then because she was seething and took my place at the door. Mom yelled some more, but she left when my partner threatened to call the cops. Mom repeated this song and dance with my other siblings, but similarly got nowhere with them. Then came the Facebook posts. Indirect rants about how ungrateful people and how shocking it is that some kids could turn against their parents so easily. Aaron somehow got involved while on her honeymoon and called Lydia to scold her for being mean to our mom. But as I've said before, Lydia is angry and she's had enough. Whatever she said to Aaron prevented her from calling the rest of us. There was then a Facebook post about how much it hurt to be kept from a grandchild. Now, there are no names mentioned, but there is only one grandchild, and that is my son. My mom's sister called me. There was yelling. I blocked her number. I know dad was trying to convince our mom to just leave us alone. He kept apologizing because she just wasn't listening to him. Aaron came home after two weeks. She tried reaching out to Lydia again, asking for all of us to talk because, and this is a quote from Lydia, clearly you, we all have some issues to work out. We did not turn up. Aaron was very angry at that because she's not used to us not turning up for her. July wasn't all bad, though. When our mom was on a rampage, our dad was still trying to do better by us, and he's improved a lot. In July, he and I went out for a meal together, just the two of us, and grabbed a drink, and he apologized. It wasn't a generic apology that he could have repeated to all of us about how he's sorry that he hurt and neglected us, but he brought up specific instances that he wanted to apologize for. He thought back on all those years and picked out moments that he wanted to apologize to me for. I know he did the same for the others. But having him apologize for things like canceling a fishing trip because Aaron needed him was something I wasn't expecting. And I never really cared for fishing, but I wanted to go on that trip because I always saw it on TV, you know. I always saw the dad and son fishing together and I wanted to have that. I wanted dad to prove that I was a priority to him somewhere deep down. It didn't happen and I never asked again. But we went fishing in July. What started as a trip between the two of us soon grew into a family day out when my siblings expressed an interest in going fishing too. My brothers first, then Nadia, and even Lydia who hates the smell of fish. My dad brought Lexi and I brought my son and it was great. It was one of the best days of my life. I suck at fishing, but I'm pretty great at collecting seashells. It was brilliant. Our parents did end up arguing when dad went home. I wasn't there, so I don't know every little detail, but from what my dad told me, the argument was mostly because mom didn't understand why we were still in contact with him and not her. JFC, lady. (laughs) She found it insulting that we were repairing our relationship with him. No, he's repairing the relationship with them, you dirty old crusty She was angry that dad wasn't pushing us to forgive her or why he wasn't stopping us from acting out. She was angry that he didn't extend an invitation to her and Aaron for the fishing trip, and she was even angrier when he explained that their presence would make us uncomfortable. Josh turned 29 at the end of July. We booked an escape room for the five of us siblings. Then we met our dad and partners for dinner that evening. Josh introduced us to his new partner for the first time. All of our attention was on Josh. The day was completely about him, which was a first for our family. Then there was a party thrown for him by his friends, which I came out of with a massive hangover. Mom started giving us the silent treatment in the middle of August. Well, thank God. Dad moved out in September. There There it is. is. While we were getting the silent treatment, Dad was bearing the brunt of her anger, and it really took it out of him. He was trying to do better by us, and she was trying to villainize us, and he ultimately told her that if she didn't take accountability for her actions soon, then he'd be contacting a lawyer. Mom didn't take him seriously. 
He's been staying in Lydia's guest room since. Mom doubled down and said that he was blind for not seeing how we were manipulating him. Unlike the rest of us, Dad obviously still has regular contact with Aaron, and according to him, she's even told Mom to reconsider. Unsurprisingly, Aaron's involvement is what Mom is what got Mom to relent. I'm not sure if she's thinking about how she's treated us or if she's silently stewing. I know she asked dad if he's going to move back home, but he said that it was better for them to have space right now. Personally, I'm struggling to see an outcome where our mom sincerely admits that she was in the wrong. I think she'll say it just to get dad back home and the rest of us talking to her again. I don't think she'll ever hold us to the same level as Aaron. In brighter news, there's officially less than a year left until my own wedding. Currently, there is no place for my mom or Aaron. My partner Jade and I are having our fathers wear ties that match me and my groomsmen, something I originally didn't plan to do, but I'm happy with the change. Nadia is settled in at college. She's made some new friends with kids in her classes, and she's enjoying it. She's happy. Even though we have an active group chat, she FaceTimes me every few days just to talk. Most of what she says I've already read in the group chat, but I'm always willing to listen to her stories again. Nadia never used to talk this much. She looks a lot happier now than she did five months ago. I think that's everything. Sorry for the novel, but like I said, a lot can happen in five months. Oh, that was a ride. We knew. We knew the dissension was going to come to a head at home. Yep. We knew it. But man, that sucks when you got a toddler involved. And with him trying to do the right thing, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, she's the kind of gal who is using that toddler against him, too. And she's going to use that toddler as bait to get him to to feel guilty and come back, but not, not actually take any accountability of her own. Yeah. She is why Aaron is why Aaron is. Yeah. She acts just the hell like what Aaron was acting like. Yeah. Aaron is her junior. For sure. She's for sure going to use that little kid as a pawn because she tried it with the grandkid standing at the door calling for the grandkid. Yeah. Oh, that's trash. <sighs> oh, my God. I'm so glad that partner stepped in and was like, oh, uh, that, that yeah. would have been a brass knuckle moment. Ooh, right? For sure. Oh, oh my God. I think Ooh, I, lady. I I think I audibly gasped at that Ooh. part. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. I love the sibling relationship so much. Yeah. X Aaron, but man, that's so cool. The way they all are together yeah. and support each other. And I love that so much. That's so cool. It's I'm, I'm glad this thing ended the way it ended, but man, what a Same. roller coaster. It, that was crazy. <sighs> uh, and there's nothing quite as awful. Nah, maybe not nothing, but it's awful to have that, that terrible family dynamic <sighs> thing. That family drama is its own level of shit. <laughs> 